One of our favourite people in the world is the wonderful Angela Levin, the royal biographer, but more importantly, a very decent lady uh, who tells it like it is when it comes to the royals and the former royals. She, of course, wrote a wonderful book about uh, Camilla, but she's so much more than that. She's our guest joining us now from the UK. Lovely to see you, Angela. Lovely to be here. Thank you. So the demise of Harry and Meghan, it continues uh, after losing Spotify deals, but also there's some rocky personal news. Yes. I mean, I think that the marriage is very nearly finished and it will be, um, she will sort of walk away. Um, she's not there when she's needed. It's very interesting because initially she held one hand uh, with one of her hands and an other hand was held holding his arm so he couldn't move more than a few inches away from her. And she was really there hanging on to him. Um, but now uh, she doesn't go where he goes. They've just sort of separated. She's doing something very positive. She's got a new PR person. She goes around in a gold dress. She's got hoping to do a TIG again, which is her online sort of suggestions of what you should buy and how you should live. And she's doing all those things, whereas Harry is in the past. He's in a very negative state and he's attacking everybody, trying to get people to give him money um, uh, in court, uh, accusing them of saying all sorts of things. And uh, it's very, very sad. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time with him, as you know, and I really liked him. Uh, and now I've gone through a, a very sort of, he's being awful stage, but now I feel very sorry for him because she wasn't there when he was trying to promote Spare, which was very difficult for him. She wasn't there for the coronation. Um, and that was going to be extremely embarrassing. He walked down the aisle in Westminster Abbey. He was the only one without a partner. And it just must feel very, very awkward and gauche. But she doesn't want to go into anything negative with him. It does seem that uh, she was willing to, to open him up uh, for the wounds to be there, but she's not really there to help with the, the public healing because let's imagine and try to view it from his perspective, which was he wanted to tell a truth, but she's not that interested in the, the post um, bloodletting healing. No, I mean, I think she made some of the wounds, actually. I mean, he wasn't like that before he got married to her. He loved his family. He loved his father. He said to me he would do anything for William. And when he's king, he wants to be there by his side. You know, everybody, uh, he, was, he was the most popular royal for quite some time, sometimes even more so than the late Queen Elizabeth. Um, but I think she exposed it and she kept on and on about how awful they are and they don't pay him for every engagement he goes on you know she didn't in a nonsense I mean he started saying it wasn't fair that he wasn't getting paid for an engagement he knew very well I mean he's living in luxury I don't mean now in California I mean while he was a, a working royal and all these negative things which is piled up um, you can see that mentally he's very wobbly um, and she's sort of whizzing off, but she just takes what she can and then leaves it behind. Do you think that he's broken uh, beyond repair now or post-marriage there is a chance for him to come back to England and to, to heal himself in front of the public or do you think that they live separate lives near the kids in the United States? Well, it's very hard to foresee the future. So I can just guess for you. I think he will be absolutely devastated. He is obsessed with her. He does think she's Princess Diana number two. He does think she's connecting with her somehow and that she would want him to be with her. I can tell you she wouldn't. She loved the monarchy. There are difficulties, but she loved the monarchy. Um, and, I, and I think he will be absolutely devastated and I don't know how anyone can come back from that and go home and say I was wrong. Incredibly hard, especially all the nasty things he said about everybody. What did you think about the decision of Spotify to walk away, to not give a second season to the podcast and also uh, some of the admissions that the podcast was not all as it seemed? Yes. Well, I think they tried very hard. Um, don't forget, it's like two years they've been with Spotify and all they got was 12 half hour, very boring, very miserable, 
all about Megan, me, me, me. If you think you've heard that, I've had much more than you. Um, it was desperately boring. And But Harry was supposed to take part or actually suggest things, and he hasn't done that. I mean, well, one could laugh because he suggested he uh, interviewed the Pope and also Putin um, to see what their childhood was like. Well, quite obviously, I would think that he did that so that he could talk about his childhood, so they could all moan together. But that's nonsense, isn't it? I mean, we couldn't have Putin. Uh, would he talk to um, Harry? No. But the other thing I found very annoying is that he only had the audacity to say he wanted to talk to them because he was a royal member of the royal family. So he's still sucking on what he did as a working member of the royal family, even now, even though now he sort of wants to crush the monarchy, doesn't want to have anything to do with them. He's the one who know. he and Meghan are the ones who knows how to run the monarchy. So, you know, he's in a muddle. He's in a terrible mid-place muddle. What did you think of the American talent agent who said, turns out Meghan Markle was not a great uh, audio talent or necessarily any kind of talent. And you know, just being just because you're famous doesn't make you great at something. Yeah, well, he knows his business, doesn't he? He's a senior man, highly respected. And he's right, actually, when you hear Meghan, I mean, I got really bored with her saying, you know, we've got to emancipate women, we've got to give them a chance, and oh, they're all not treated properly. That's 30, 40 years ago. I, I know lots of women, and we can all work well, we get paid well, well, you know, Okay, <laughs> but same as everybody else, we can we can get where we want to be. We can be half mothers and half workers. We can be full time mothers. We've got more options than we've had for a very long time. Um, but she's not good at it. You, she's not a good actress, and she's just really interested in talking about herself. And a number of times you heard what she did when she was eleven and asked um, a soap. Um, company to not say women should be in the kitchen you know we've heard it about 25 times and even then that's not true it's because everybody in the classroom wrote but she just talks about herself and you want to sigh so the man's right so what about also when they, they decided to try to launch the Archwell name but surprise surprise somebody else had it is it that hard when you do nothing all day to google whether a trademark is available or not yeah, well, she wouldn't do that, would she? She has a staff who could be able to do that. They should check it for her. But they, they had the name in 2015, I believe. And it's quite right. If they got it first, they should hold on to it. Uh, why not? That's what they're known for. Um, and I thought it was um, typical of the fact that they move very quickly. They go from one thing to another thing to another thing, never really spending proper time learning about it, studying it, investigating it. And so how can you do that? Don't you, as you say, naturally check the name of a company you want to use and you have it whizzing back. But she doesn't bother with those details. What she wants, if she wants Archwell, because her child is named Archwell, she's going to get it. And I expect she's furious that she can't. But I think, why doesn't she have a Lilibet thing? Because if she's so keen on women, it's not fair that Lilibet isn't included. What an excellent point. Uh, what an excellent point. And yet another example of those people who, who uh, talk the talk but don't walk the walk. When you talk about people looking forward versus looking back, I mean, no starker example of that than Harry and his brother. Yes. I mean, it's amazing the difference between them. They were so close. And particularly, Harry said to me that you have unique experiences that no one else has, one losing their mother when they were very young and the other um, having the whole world see the, them when they walk past to take her to Westminster Abbey for the funeral service. But um, William has become much more keen on the role, which he didn't want when he was younger. Uh, you know, Harry said, nobody wants to be a king in my family. I don't blame them. It's jolly hard work. But William, I think with Catherine's support, has found things that really something that he can get his teeth into and to do this and um, for a long while. And 
work very hard and I was interested in homelessness and trying to get rid of that with a plan that might might work but there he has Catherine who's very supportive but Harry you know he's dotted about the place and they don't really know what to do one minute it's acting one minute it's run it rushing off to a charity it's there for 10 minutes get the people photographers there come away you know they're they're not interested in really really working hard to understand something and follow it and that, as you said um William's going forward Harry's going backwards so it's a terrible plight to see really well you talk about the reality of of a royal life is that it is a life of commitment and we now see the lack of commitment here. And this has been the story of Meghan's life. Uh, nothing for very long, move on to something else. The longest uh, part of her life was a TV show not many people watched. <laughs> yeah, do you mean Suits? Yes. Yes, yeah, well, well I, I watched one once I knew they got engaged and it was an incredibly boring thing. And it's very sort of grade three, <laughs> grade four, grade five, you know, <laughs> terrible. Um, Yes, that's how they do things. They've got a huge number of staff, but nothing seems to come out of it. And I think that's just, um, uh, she wants so much. She wants to be in politics. She wants to write books. She wants to go around inf as an influencer, earning fortunes. Um, you know, it, it, it's ridiculous to try and gather all those things in one go. You need to focus, don't you? We all know that. Um, concentrate. They can't do that. Sorry, is a lot of Megan's future uh, announced by a PR company true? Well, I don't believe them. I don't know. I haven't been in contact with them. But whenever there's something negative about them in the papers, and we get that quite a lot, um, there's immediately something very positive about what's going to happen to them that uh, comes in in the future. Uh, you know, and it's it's just sort of corny, really. They obviously have to try and improve things. The same as this nonsense about they were changing their name. Uh, that got rid of a nasty thing about Spotify. You know, that came just afterwards that Megan wanted to follow Diana. So she wanted to be called a Spencer, which is um, Diana's father's name, Earl Spencer, the late Earl Spencer. Um, and of course, everybody was talking about that, saying, how can you do that? It's ridiculous, you know. And so it just moves the thing, one thing off the head, the front pages, and then get puts another one on. How they think it all up, I've got no idea, but I don't believe it. I don't believe they've got loads of things waiting for Megan because people, she's now not a very good person to be known with and to follow. Um, she's blown her trust and people now think that she's actually not the lovely person that they thought. I never liked her. I don't think you ever liked her, but you give her the best sort of, well, see how you get on. But I think now there's too many people who have found out what she's really like, which is just me, 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 and grabbing what she can and moving on. She wants to be globally famous. She didn't like the UK because we're a tiny country. Everything she talked about when she was in the royal family was global. She wouldn't talk about just looking after the UK. So she's got mag magnanimous, magnificent, enormous, things that she's going to do, but they don't come off. I think she peaked at deal or no deal, but that's just my theory. All right, Angela, lovely to talk to you. I look forward to talking to you again very soon. All the best. Read her books, follow her wherever she is. Angela Levin, one of the best from the UK. Talk to you soon. Thank you.